Welcome everyone, today we are back for a new video. In this one, I'll try to explain what is an actor, which is a core concept used on the internet computer architecture, and we'll then write a few lines of Motoko to create our first actor. Let's start with a bit of theory. What is an actor? We can think of the internet computer as a collection of canisters, and here's three canisters, canister A, canister B, canister C. And those canisters can represent different services or applications on the platform. This one represents discover, this one represents district, and this one represents entrepot. Uh, if you don't know those services, don't worry, I will provide links in the description. So all those canisters are going to store variables, do their calculation, and send messages. The problem we might face is that we can't just pull all those canisters out, make them run some code, and hope that everything will go fine. One example of that, one situation, would be, let's imagine that for some reason, Discover create a service that is limited to people that own some NFTs on district. So you are logging into Discover and trying to access this service. So canister A will check with canister B if you are the owner of the special NFT. At the same time, someone is buying your special NFT that was for sale on a marketplace like Entrepot. You can still access the service, even though you don't have the NFT anymore. So that situation might not be that bad, but it's the kind of situation where different things happen at different uh, canister at the same time. And it can, it can pose uh, serious security issues. And that's why the actor base model has been invented. It has been invented as a way to deal with what is called as concurrent computation. And basically, the actor base model imposes a, st a structure around messages and different actors. In the actor model, every unit of computation, so every canister, is treated as an actor, and that's the internet computer. The, the actor model, sorry, the actor base model, is a theory of computer science that was invented in 1972, so it's not specific to the internet computer. And basically, as I've said, as I've said it's a framework for dealing with concurrent computation. In Motoko, a canister is abstracted as an actor. The actor base model is a large theory and, and it's not the scope of this video, but I'm going to explain the basics of this theory and especially answer one question, which is what is an actor authorized to do? So most of the time, our actor is gonna wait doing nothing for messages. And so here's our actor, he receives a message. So here's the message. He has no three possibilities. The first one is pretty simple. It can answer uh, the message with new messages to other actors. So it can be uh, the first actor that's, that sends the message, or it can be other actors. The second one is pretty cool. The actor can create other actors. And in fact, that's a possibility of canisters on the internet computer. Inside the code of a canister, you can spam new canisters, which offers uh, a lot of possibilities, and it's pretty cool, in, in my opinion. The last one is a bit more complicated. The actor can decide how it will handle next messages. And basically, the actor can change its private state. So each actor has a private state that can be modified only by the actor himself. And modifying the private state will modify how the actor will answer next messages. For example, uh, in our situation, if the message on the left, so the first message, was increase account by 5, the new value of the account is 15, indeed. And it means that if the next message is, for example, a request value of account, the answer will be different uh, after the message. So that's completely logical. And that's the actor uh, base model uh, simplified. So now let's write some code. OK, I am inside Visual Studio Code uh, in the folder actor that I've created, and it's an empty folder. So I'm going to create uh, two files. The first one is uh, main.mo. So .mo is the, the format for Motoko files. And there will, be, there will be my actor inside. And the other one is the configuration file that you should never forget. And it's dfx.json. And we need to specify our canisters. So we have one, which is, uh, we are going to call it super actor. And we need to specify the main. Uh, so it's the, the main uh, entry point, the main file for this canister. And it's going to be uh, main.mo. So it indicates that it's in the current folder. And the type is 
type Motoko. So last time uh, in the last video, we had the canister of type assets and this one is of type Motoko. So that's it for the configuration file. Now let's go to the main.mo. And so every Motoko file uh, that represents an actor needs to start with the word actor, like that. So basically what we want to do is create an actor that will store a variable and returns this variable to the outside world. So it's pretty basic, let's do it. First, we wanna declare our first variable. So let's use the keyword var. Let's call our variable value. And this, it brings me to the first point of Motoko, which is that Motoko is a typed language. It means that every time you declare a variable, you need to declare the type of this variable. So the, the different types are text, uh, not, int. I'm going to do a video about the types and explain everything clearly. But for now, you just need to know that the, semi, uh, the column that you see here uh, is used to declare the type, the type. And let's assign a value to value. So this sentence can be read variable value of type not is equals to zero. And function also needs type. So let's declare a, vi a function. We want to declare a public function because we want the function to be uh, accessible outside of the actor. So we use the keyword public. So it's a function. So func. We need to give a name to this function. So give value. And here you need to specify the arguments. We don't want any arguments for, for this function. So we let that uh, empty. And then we need to specify with the comma the type of the return arguments. And what we want to do is return value. And value is of type not. So let's say that the return type for this function is of type not. Then you need to, to use the brackets and write your function. So we just want to return value. And that's it, our function has been written. Now we want to start the replica, so defx start. The replica is starting. Once the replica uh, is running, you need to open a new terminal. And then defx deploy. And so it's deploying our actor. Okay, we run into an issue, and that's totally normal. I need to explain something. I wanted the error to happen to explain the concept asynchronous answer. So let's imagine we have three canisters, canister A, canister B, and canister C. And for whatever reason, canister B is storing the name of people. Canister A wants to know the name of a user, uh, so user 1, 2, 3, 4. So he will make a request to canister B. The request is a uh, give name of user 1, 2, 3, 4. The problem is that from the point of view of canister A, we have no idea what canister B is doing. Maybe he's occupied doing some other stuff with another canister or processing its own code. And that's a huge problem because uh, canister A is still running code and maybe he needs the name to continue processing whatever he's doing. So what is going to happen is that when canister A will make its request, it will automatically create what is called a promise. And a promise can be fulfilled later. So it's a variable uh, of canister A that can be fulfilled later when canister B has done his job and uh, sends the answer. So the promise will get the right value at that moment. That's why you need to specify the async keyword uh, for the argument returned by the function, because that way the canister will know that the type is async so it will create a promise and will wait for the answer. And for every public function, the return type will be async because a public function is called by other canisters on the internet computer. And those other canisters have no way to know if the answer will be immediate or if they have to wait because the canister they are calling is doing something else. So yeah, an answer to a public function can never guarantee to be immediate. So any value return need to be of type async. Okay, so we are back in Visual Studio Code and let's uh, let's fix this error. So let's add the keyword async and try to deploy. And this time it worked perfectly. So let's try to interact with our canister from uh, uh, using the dfx tool. So for that, you use the command dfx canister call, oh, sorry, super actor and give value. And so 
we have no argument to pass. And when you have no argument, you need to specify it like that. We wait a bit and we get the answer, which is zero of type not. Just to show you, we can totally use non-public function and like traditional function without the async keyword, but we can't pull those functions from outside of the actor. So let me show you. So I have this function give value, which is exactly the same, but in a non-public way, I would say. So without the async keyword and the public keyword. So let's deploy and try to call this function. So if I try the fx canister call super actor, uh, this time give value like that, you will see that, and it's completely logical, that the fx doesn't find any method, canister has no update method give value. What we can do is use an uh, internal function like that and uh, shape them with a public function and so we can call them from the outside. So I have a public function and inside the public function I'm using the internal function give value. And this internal function doesn't need to be of type async. Uh, the return doesn't need to be of type async because again, the canisters know that this execution will be uh, immediate and that the return will be immediate. So we can try to deploy that like that. And it worked. And we can try to call give value. So the FX canister calls super actor uh, give value like that. And again, it worked. Okay, how to interact with canisters on the internet computer? There are two types of calls. The first one is query call, and the second one is update call. Query call are very fast, they take a few milliseconds, but they cannot change the state. Whereas update calls are much longer, they take a few seconds, but they can change the state. What about update calls? So let's imagine we have a user that wants to buy something on the website. So if the user wants to buy something, we need to check his balance and maybe change this balance. So we need to make changes. So we have our website, our canister. And this canister is replicated across seven nodes. And those seven nodes will receive the message and they will perform the calculation to get the new uh, balance of the user. And so they are all doing the same calculation and they, they need to reach a consensus on the new state, so on the new balance of the user. And reaching the consensus is quite long. It takes a lot of calculation and it's not something simple. So it takes a few, a few seconds. And then uh, the answer is given to the user uh, so he can buy or he cannot. So update calls take between two and three seconds, which is already uh, really, really fast for a blockchain. Query call. So let's imagine the same user, but this time it just wants to take a look and it doesn't want to change anything so we don't need to make changes to the state. We still have our canister and we still have our seven nodes. So the user is going to request, uh, for example, its account balance and the canister is going to ask to one of the seven nodes, in our case, the node number four, and the node is going to reply immediately. So it takes a few milliseconds, of course, but it's quite fast. And we got the answer. One thing I would like to say about query call is that you need to keep in mind they are not as secure as update calls. Because of the fact that you rely on only one of the seven nodes, it is possible that this node is malicious and you get a false answer. But don't be afraid, you can still use query calls, you just need to keep that in mind. Let's try that with our actor and try to make an update call and a query call. Actually, by default, if you don't precise anything, your function is an update call. So this function is an update call. And that might seem like a surprise because we don't update anything, we just look at a value. But actually, you can use update call anywhere. Now, if you want to look at something, you can do it with an update call and that will be more secure. So now let's do a query call. So if you want to do a query call, you just need to precise that it's a query. And it's the same syntax for the rest. We can specify that it's a bit faster. And you still need the async, async sorry, uh, because that's still a public function. So let's deploy. My actor has been deployed. And before ending this video, I want to show you the difference in speed between update and query. So let's make an update call. So give value is an update call. And you can see it takes a few seconds. I would say three seconds. And if we try the same thing, but with give value faster, 
you can see it's way faster. It takes a few milliseconds. And that's it for today. Thanks for following this video.